Seven interesting facts about the birth of Jesus. Many of us are familiar with the story of Jesus' birth. We have had our children participate in church Christmas pageants as angels, donkeys or sheep. And many of us have our own clay or porcelain nativity sets. However, as is always the case with scripture, you may learn something new with each reading. Let us look at some fascinating facts about Jesus' birth that you might not have known. What is the story of the birth of Jesus? The story of Jesus' birth can be found in Matthew and Luke. Mary, a young virgin, learns that she will give birth to the world's Messiah through the power of the Holy Spirit. She and her husband Joseph traveled to Bethlehem to register for the census of the Roman Emperor. When they arrive, the city is entirely packed. Because there is no room at the inn, a stressed innkeeper offers them a place to stay the night in a cave. Mary gives birth to Jesus there. Local shepherds bear witness to this humble birth after receiving the joyful tidings from the angels. Years later, wise men from the east appear, bearing gifts for the child. Three decades later, this child would save the entire world through his death and resurrection. These story details are probably familiar to you. Here are some interesting facts about Jesus' birth that you may not have known. Seven interesting facts about the birth of Jesus. Number one, Jesus was born in the same village as King David and was foretold in prophecy. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Isaiah 9 verse 7. Bethlehem was a famous city, hence why Jesus' parents could find no room in the inn during the time of the census. Luke 2 verses 10 to 12. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. But Jesus is not only a direct descendant of David's line, but he was also born there. This not only fulfills the Old Testament prophecy, but the symbolism of the heavenly king being born in the same place as the king after God's own heart is also significant. Matthew refers to the Old Testament more than any of the other Gospels. One of his favorite sayings is that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. This is one of the reasons Matthew is placed first in the New Testament, despite the fact that it was not written first. It offers the most excellent continuity with the Old Testament of all. There are 29 different quotations from the Old Testament, as well as 121 indirect references or allusions. This is especially evident in Matthew's birth narrative. To Gentile eyes, he appears to take his time explaining why Jesus was born in Bethlehem, because the prophets had predicted that the king would be born in Judea's Bethlehem. However, this would be critical for Jews who were wondering if this was the Messiah God had promised so long ago. Matthew wants readers to understand that the prophets predicted the virgin birth, the slaughter of innocents, the flight into Egypt, and the return to Galilee. The phrase that it might be fulfilled which the prophets spoke appears 13 times in Matthew's account of Jesus' birth, where he quotes Micah, Hosea, Jeremiah and Isaiah. David was born in Bethlehem, a small town in Judah's hill country. In Luke 2 verse 4, Bethlehem is referred to as the city of David. Luke 2 verse 4, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. During King Saul's reign, the Lord instructed the prophet Samuel to anoint a young shepherd boy as the next king of Israel. God sent Samuel to Bethlehem, where David and his family lived. 1 Samuel 16 verses 1 to 4 
The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Number 2. Jesus' birth came after 400 years of silence from God. After 400 years of silence from God, the birth of Jesus took place. Jesus came to the aid of suffering humanity nearly 2,000 years ago, performing miracles such as healing the sick and casting out demons. This remained constant throughout his three and a half years on earth. Do you want to know what God did after the Old Testament prophets died? God remained silent for 400 years until Jesus' birth. Several nations overtake Israel during this 400-year period. Israel successfully rebels against some, but by the time Jesus arrives, Israel has been occupied by the Romans. The Israelites desired a savior, as they had for 400 years in Egypt. No wonder they begged Jesus to overthrow Rome, just as the Red Sea had done for the Egyptians. Number 3. Joseph could have had Mary slain for adultery. In Christian circles today, adultery almost always leads to divorce. However, according to Old Testament practices, Leviticus 20 verse 10, committing adultery could be fatal. Leviticus 20 verse 10, New International Version. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. When he discovers Mary's pregnancy, Joseph decides to attempt to divorce her quietly instead of sentencing her to death. Thankfully, an angel appears to him and describes Jesus' true identity. Joseph proceeds with his marriage to Mary. Matthew 1 verses 18 to 25 this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Number 4. Jesus was probably not born in December. Then why do we celebrate Christmas in December? We can thank Emperor Constantine for the 4th century for that. For a more wholesome alternative, Christians would frequently hold holidays at the same times as pagan festivals. In this case, Christmas fell on the winter solstice. While Christmas has been celebrated on December 25th for nearly 1700 years, Jesus was not born in December, and he was not even born in the winter. Emperor Constantine established Christmas on the winter solstice, which is December 25th, 336 AD. However, Jesus most likely had a spring birth, thanks to the mention in Luke 2 of shepherds abiding in their fields. During springtime, sheep gave birth to lambs, 
hence why they would stay out at night as well in case a night birth occurred. But we cannot say for sure exactly when Jesus' birth happened, as shepherds did stay out in the fields year-round. What is probably the first mention of Jesus' birth on December 25th dates back to the 3rd century, when Hippolytus of Rome wrote, The first advent of our Lord in the flesh, when he was born in Bethlehem, was December 25th, Wednesday. No matter when Jesus was conceived, the fact that is important is that he was born. He came into the world to atone for our sins. He was resurrected to eternal life, and he is alive today. This is what we should celebrate, as the Old Testament tells us in passages like Zechariah 2, verse 10. Shout and be glad, O daughter of Zion, for I am coming, and I will live among you, declares the Lord. Further, the angels that announced the birth to the shepherds brought good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Luke 2, verse 10. Indeed, this is a reason to rejoice every day, not just once a year. Number 5. The narrative intentionally draws a contrast between Jesus and John the Baptist. The Bible purposefully intertwines the birth stories of John the Baptist and Jesus. The birth of John the Baptist was nothing short of miraculous. This is supported by angelic appearances and the fact that Elizabeth had long since passed her childbearing years. But this story seems to be a warm-up act for Jesus' birth. His mother, a virgin, gave birth to Jesus via the power of the Holy Spirit. The time of his birth, the location of his birth in conjunction with the Old Testament prophecies, hundreds of signs fulfilled, this could not have remotely happened if not for the power of God. Number 6. The wise men were not there on the very day of Jesus' birth. Many of you might have heard that the wise men did not appear during the night of Jesus' birth, no matter what nativity scenes may try to tell you. As a matter of fact, it took them a while to complete the walk from their motherland to Judea when they approached Herod. This means they did not see Jesus on the day he was born. Matthew 2 Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he, he who has been born the king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Number 7. A manger is a feeding trough. Forget about the wooden prop seen in Christmas pageants. The manger served as a feeding station for animals. In that part of the world, animals were kept in caves and feeding troughs were made out of stone. So Jesus was probably born in a cave around Bethlehem somewhere and laid in a stone trough. The birth of Jesus is nothing short of a miracle. And even though many of us have heard the story many times, we can learn something new every time. And an additional fact, like Moses, 
there was a massacre of the innocents during the time of Jesus' birth. After the wise men failed to report back to him about Jesus' birth, Herod gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under. Matthew 2 Now when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he set forth to put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel.